Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here talking about sums of infinite geometric series. Here I've got a geometric series 4 minus 2 plus 1 minus a half plus a fourth. The question is, does this infinite series converge or diverge? If I add forever, does it add up closer and closer to some real number, saying it converges, or does it add without bound, not arriving at a real number? in which case we say it diverges. So we're gonna actually talk to you about how to decide when you have the sum of a geometric series in this video. If you remember from our previous video about the partial sums of geometric series, we had this formula here. We're going to use this to analyze what happens with an infinite geometric series. In other words, what happens as we sum a sub n from one to infinity. What we'll do is look at using R repeatedly and see what happens to our value for the partial sums when n gets really, really big. So the first thing we'll look at is what happens when we plug in some common ratio that's bigger than 1. If R is 2, imagine plugging in 2 and then taking a bigger and bigger power of 2. Well, we'd get a really, really big number here, 1 minus a really, really big number. That would also be just a really big number that's negative. So in the case of R being bigger than 1, we get something really large on top. And in that case, we just get a really, really large number. And that tells us things are gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. So in this case, when we have a ratio, common ratio for geometric series, where R is bigger than one, then because this top expression blows up really big, we'll have that the series diverges. Let's look at a similar case when R is less than negative one. So negative two, negative three, something like that. Let's say R is negative two in this case. Negative two to a really big power, we're still going to just keep getting really, really big numbers. I'll take one minus that. I'll get a really, really big negative number in this case as well. And so we really just get something that's very large as well. In that case, we'll also get this the series diverges. In the case where r is equal to exactly 1, let's say, then we can't even really use this formula. If I try to plug 1 into this formula, you'll notice on the bottom of the fraction, we get 1 minus 1, which would be 0, and divide by 0 is undefined. So we can't actually use this formula to analyze what happens to an infinite geometric series when r is 1. What we can do is think more simply though. If r is 1, that means you're multiplying by 1 to get to the next term all of the terms are going to be the same. If you have every term being the same and you keep adding forever, then it's going to add up to an infinitely large amount eventually. We would say this diverges. I suppose except in the case of where all the terms are zero, if you start with zero, but there's an easy way to figure out that adding zero forever is going to converge to zero. So we're not really gonna think of this list of infinite zeros and adding them together as something that's geometric, I think, in the future. If we think about when r is exactly negative 1, well, then we wouldn't have anything undefined on the bottom. Uh, but what would happen is we would just simply have some value. We'd multiply by negative 1. We'd get a different sign. Then we'd multiply by negative 1. We'd get the same sign that we started with back. We'd keep getting alternating signs and the same values. Um, adding those together, this is from our previous video where we noticed that we kept getting partial sums that were 1 and then 0 and then 1 and then 0. The pattern of the partial sums was just jumping back and forth between two values. Use. And so we say this doesn't really converge either. It doesn't diverge because it adds up to an infinite amount. We just say in this case it diverges because the partial sums jump around. So now what if r is in this range between negative 1 and 1 that we haven't discussed yet? Well, if I take r to be some number, let's say 0.9, and I start taking bigger and bigger powers of 0.9, so let's just say I start at 0.9 and I keep multiplying by 0.9. And if I keep doing so, you can tell that the numbers are getting smaller and smaller. And if I keep multiplying forever, I'm getting even smaller and smaller decimals. And eventually my number is going to be so small I can't tell the difference between it and the number zero. We get scientific notation. It becomes so small. Uh, so eventually, this expression here becomes really close to zero. So I get one minus zero, and that means my stuff in the parentheses is just going to get really close to one minus zero, which would just be one. So on the top, I would basically be getting closer to a1 times 1, which means I'm really just getting closer to a1 on the top of the fraction. So we approach this formula a1 over 1 minus r as long as our ratio is between negative 1 and 1 
and it's a geometric series. So we'll say that the geometric series is going to converge. In other words, it's infinite sum. We'll get closer and closer to the first term over one minus R. That's true only when the common ratio for your geometric series is between negative one and one. If your common ratio is anything that is not between negative one and one, then your geometric series will diverge. Let's take a look at some examples, decide if they converge or diverge, and if they converge, we'll say what they converge to. Okay, so if I'm using this idea, I need to decide first, is my ratio between negative one and one? And if I look at one plus a fourth plus a sixteenth, plus one over 64 plus one over 256, you might be able to tell that this is geometric and that the ratio here is one fourth. You can see this times a fourth gives me this, this times a fourth gives me this, this times a fourth gives me this, so our common ratio is one fourth. So because my ratio is between negative one and one, this will converge, so we'll say this converges, and we can use our formula now that we know it converges to figure out what it converges to. So our infinite sum, if I continue adding this pattern forever, is going to equal the first term over one minus r. So in this case, my first term is one, and one minus r is gonna be one minus one fourth, because my ratio is a fourth. So that will give me one over one minus a fourth, which would be three fourths. And one over three fourths tells us that this would actually add up closer and closer to four thirds the further we go. So if we add up an infinite number of terms, we will get to the value four thirds. For our second example, four minus two plus one minus a half plus a fourth that we started the video with, recognizing that this is geometric, um, I start at four and then I go to negative two and then I go to one. And if you're not sure what the ratio is and you know it's geometric, remember you can always take one term, divide by the term before it, and you'll get the ratio. If you take this and divide by that, you'll probably see you get that the ratio here is negative one half. So because negative one half is between negative one and one, we would say that this converges and we can figure out what it converges to. What do all these terms add up to if I go forever? Well, the infinite sum is going to be again, the first term over one minus R. So in this case, the first term is four, so my a1 is four on top. One minus r, one minus negative a half would be like plus a half. So I will get four over three halves. And then if I bump that up and multiply by the reciprocal, that will be the same as four times two thirds. So if I added using this pattern forever, I would get closer and closer to the number eight thirds. Okay, looking at another one, one ninth plus a third plus one plus three plus nine. This is geometric. If you look at it for a minute, you might be able to tell that the ratio is three. If you take any number and divide it by the term before it, you'll get a ratio of three. Common ratio of three is not between negative one and one, so we can simply just say that this series diverges, and that's all we say for this one. For the next one, one minus two fifths plus four over 25 minus eight over 125 plus 16 over 625. Some things you might notice, first of all, we're changing signs each time, so that tells us the ratio is negative. On the top, I'm multiplying by two each time, and on the bottom, I'm multiplying by five each time. So we can deduce that the ratio for this geometric series is negative two fifths. Since negative two fifths is between negative one and one, I know that this one converges. Let's figure out what it converges to. It converges to the first term over one minus r. So it will be the first term and this one is one. One minus r minus negative two fifths would be like plus two fifths. And if I add one and I add two fifths to it, that's going to give me seven fifths. And one over seven fifths, if I bump that up and take the reciprocal, I will get five over seven for my sum of an infinite number of terms for that series. Taking a look at some from sigma notation. So here we have uh, the sum of an infinite number of terms and their pattern is five thirds to the n. 
What we might notice here, without actually listing out a bunch of terms and trying to deduce it that way, is that this pattern is saying repeatedly multiply by 5 thirds. Every time n goes up by 1, I'm going to multiply by another copy of 5 thirds. So just by looking at this and seeing that the n power applies to 5 thirds, I know that my ratio here is 5 over 3. Since 5 thirds, that's like 1 and 2 thirds, 5 thirds is bigger than 1, it's not between negative 1 and 1, so I know that this diverges if I were to add up an infinite number of terms using this pattern. For the last one here, 5 times 1 third to the n, now this is different, the n is applying only to the 1 third, it is not applying to the 5. So what am I repeatedly multiplying by when I look at this? I'm actually repeatedly multiplying by just the 1 third part if I look at this. So my r here is 1 third. 1 third is between negative 1 and 1, so this one will converge and we can say what it converges to. Remember that the infinite sum is going to be the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. Now the first term, we don't have a list, so we need to actually plug in the very first number from our index to get this, right? So our lower summation limit is 1. If I plug in 1 to get the first term, then I would have 1 third to the 1, which would just be one third. And then if I multiply by the five in front, then that will give me five thirds for my first term over one minus r, so one minus one third. That will give me five thirds over two thirds. If I bump that up and multiply by the reciprocal, I'll get five over three times three over two. We will get five halves. If I sum up an infinite number of terms from this series, we will get five halves. Okay, so that is convergence and divergence of sums of infinite geometric series. Thank you for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.